soil. So that, Lord God, that you can produce good fruit. And Father, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said? Amen. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Worry. Is anybody here worried? No. Good. No hands are up, so we can all go home. There's no use preaching today. There's no worry in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. The message today that I'm going to be sharing is entitled, Worry is a Waste of Time. Ooh. Energy, yes. Energy, time, worry, worry, worry. Worry about something. Oh, well, we'll just get into the message. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 41 10, the scripture that we're going to be using all day is in Matthew, but we're going to start off with Isaiah chapter 41 10. It says, Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. How, how, everybody born again, raise your hand. Everybody born again except the Christ. Amen. So that means, guess what? Somebody is living in you, with you. He's always with you. And what's his name? Jesus. Jesus. He's with you all the time. And he says, fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with thy right hand of my righteousness. If worry was a professional sport, I think we'd have a lot of gold medals and valuable, most valuable people. <laughs> Hallelujah. The word worry comes up in the dictionary many different times and has many different definitions, but today we're going to work, we're going to be look we're going to be looking at one. The definition of to torment oneself with cares and anxieties. To torment. Torment. Worry brings torment. Worry brings unnecessary torment that it doesn't come from the outside. It comes from within. It's something that we produce. It's something that we, we produce, and we produce worry. Every time we worry, we're actually tormenting ourselves. So in a sense, really what happens is there's a tormenting spirit. So guess what? There's a, there's a, there's a, a spirit that is tormenting us, and that spirit is a spirit of worriness. We're being wor we're worrying about something. We're going to get into some deep situations this morning, which I believe will help us. Let's listen. You can't just turn off the switch and say, "Hey, I'm not worrying anymore." It takes time to grow to a place where we don't worry as much, and then we don't worry more we, as much as that, and much as that, and then finally we sometimes get to a place where. Well, we're going to see that there's some scriptures, if you really think about it, people who are usually very joyful are people who are in the Word, who are trusting God, and probably most of the time they're not worrying about things because they trust in who they believe in. When we worry, we're allowing our minds to dwell on difficult situations Fears come in, and then all of a sudden it weighs us down. And think about it. Many of our anxieties, many of our worries never happen. Right. Amen. Amen. We worry about something, and we're worrying about it overnight. You can't sleep. You got this thing going on. You can't do anything. You can't get up and change anything. But we sit there, and it becomes what? Torment. Yes. I think of today that if anything that we can get in our minds is that worry is torment. We literally are tormenting ourselves over something that we can't change. Hallelujah. 
We lose sleep. It impacts our relationship. It affects our eating. And then it causes our work to be distracted and not being proficient in what we're called to do. It may interfere in our work situation, in our relationships, because of worry. We tend to worry about things that seem so important to us while we tend to trust God the least. Amen. So while we're worrying, what we're really doing is really pushing God away and trusting that he can't do it. For some reason, he can't do it. So we come up with a solution. And the solution is we get stressed out and then we try to cope with it. We redirect it or find something that we can do to resolve our worry. If I can resolve it. So we think all night long or maybe during the day and we start thinking and we start saying, well, if I do this, if I, and we haven't even sought the Lord yet. We haven't even come to a place where we realize that we are nothing more but tormenting ourselves over and over and over. Worry is like fire. Now think about it this way. Worry is like fire. All of a sudden you have something on your mind, something that really is starting to bother you, and your, your worry starts to creep. And what happens is, as the more you think about it, it's like pouring gasoline on it. The more you worry, the more gasoline you pour. And the hotter the flame gets. And the bigger the flame gets. Worry can be an all-consuming fire. And what happens is we then become tied down to something called worry so much that we become ineffective in anything that we do. That's how crippling worry can be. But Jesus says here in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 to 30, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Heavy laden, you're, you're, there's a burden there. There's something there that's really, really causing you not to, not to really focus on God. And God says, hold it. Jesus said, come to me. Come to me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, listen, don't go over there. Don't go talking to that one. Don't go. To, come to me. Come to me. All ye who are labor and heavy laden. He says, and I will give you rest. You can't find rest in yourself while you're in worry. You can't. You can't find rest. And yet we try to figure it out. We try to do many different things. We try to cope with the issue. We try to hide it. If I can hide it, maybe nobody will know that I'm worrying, but I don't know about you, but when you know somebody's worrying, you can see worry on somebody's face. Amen. It's as clear as day. There's worry. There's something there going on. There's something happening. In verse 29, he says, Take my yoke upon you. Now listen, he says this, And what? And what? And learn of me. Learn of me. Learn how I would deal with that situation. Yeah. Learn about my word. Learn that I am who I say I am. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And you shall find rest for your soul. In that time of worry, we find rest. In that time of worry, we find rest. And he says in verse 30, For my yoke is easy and my burden is is life. So we're going to go over into Matthew. We're going to be going over into the uh, Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew chapter 5 is where it starts and we end in 7. And all of this is instructions that Jesus is sharing. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is sharing all of this information to help us to move forward and not be worrisome. He starts, he starts off with these things, and he talks about money, he talks about possessions, and then he leads to a whole dissertation of worry. <laughs> worry. So obviously, if he speaks a whole, almost, almost, a whole almost a whole part of the chapter, end of the chapter, on worry, it must be something that he knows that we're going to have a problem with. He only dibble dabbles with money and possessions, but he, he does a whole thing on worry. Hallelujah. 
So let's go over to Matthew chapter 6, verse 19 to 34. <clears throat> I'm going to read it from the New King James. It's a little, bit, a little bit different. Do not lay for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where the thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And we're going to get into that in a, just, a, a touch, just a touch of a little bit. And then he says, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? And then he says in verse 24, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And Jesus is, is saying there, and I want you to understand this, you, there's always going to be a price to pay. That if you, if you choose this master, there's going to be a price to pay. If you choose this master, there's still going to be a price to pay. Each one, you're going to have to pay a price. When you pay the price for the kingdom of God, it's literally that taking everything you have and giving it to him and allowing him. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a, 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 a situation that we have to do over and over and over is get rid of self so that he can be all in us. On the other side, if you want all the treasures of this earth, there's going to be a time just like, um, what was it, uh, Midas Muffler? Pay me now or pay me later. But you are going to pay. You are going to pay. There's going to come a time that you can gather all the treasures of the earth and hoard it to yourself, and that becomes who you are, and there's going to be a price to pay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In verse 35, he says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. It is not life more than food and the body more than clothing. Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor they reap nor they gather their barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to your stature? And then in verse 28, he says, So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not more much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or what shall I drive? Or where am I going to go? Or what's tomorrow? How am I going to get that job? How am I going to do this? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Yes. Our desire to gain wealth, mm. to gain money, mm. what will happen is all these things of the world will take our affection away from God. Mm. Basically, that's what it does. It robs us mm. from the presence, and it robs us from the communication, and it robs us from the intimacy with God. But we're not just talking about money today. 
We're talking about issues each and every day. Jesus taught that the worry is futile, that it's worthless. He says it's worthless. It produces no fruit whatsoever. Worry produces no fruit. So, if it is not producing any fruit, then why should we worry? Well, it's a human characteristic in our lives because we are trying to trust someone we can't see, someone that we don't know. Is he, is he really going to do that for us? Is he really going to supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? And we can quote scripture and we can quote all we want all day long, but until we take those scriptures and it becomes real in our heart, to where there's a point where it says, you know what? His scripture says that, I'm standing on it, and I'm not moving. Amen. Amen. And when that happens, something transfers in your life. You start to realize and you start to trust God more than ever before. Amen. Worrying about something is not going to solve the issue. Or it's not going to make you a way out. Worrying about it can resolve nothing. So when we spend our time worrying about money, about people, about careers, about materialistic things, we do. We are then devoted to it. What you honor, what you worship, what you desire becomes your God. Whatever it is, no matter what it is, you can sit here and say, but, but Pastor, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't have any idols in my life. I don't have any things that I'm passionate about. Well, we need to stop and we need to take an assessment of where we are because there are some times that we think everything that's good is God. It may not be God, but it may be an idol because we continue to, to just desire it more and more and more. There's nothing, nothing, nothing should take the place of God. Amen. Nothing right. should take the place of God. He should be number one in every aspect of our lives. So what is on your mind most of the time? Is God on your mind most of the time? I remember years ago, a pastor had shared with me, and I tried to do it all the time, and that is, he said, he says, I don't let go 15 seconds go by every part of the day, and I just don't say thank you, Lord, or I just say, hey, I love you, Lord. And when you start doing that on a constant basis, what happens is he's always on your mind. Now, is that going to change your worry? No, it's not going to change your worry. What's going to do is you're going to learn that you're going to have to go to him first. Amen. That no matter what's going on, no matter what's happened, is that you're going to rely on him because he is the one who will produce and make a way where there is no way. Amen. Not you. Not your husband or your wife or your family or the government or this person or that person or your pastor or anybody. They can't make a way. Only he can. Yes. There may be good counsel. There may be good ideas. There may be good things. But ultimately, it's finding what God's desire is in that situation. Yes. So we are to seek the kingdom of God. Let me tell you, there are times, and I'm, I'll be the one to admit it, that I may not say that it's worry. I, well, let's put it this way. There was, this morning I had, woke, I had woken up, about five I guess it was, and right away, instantaneously, there was something that came across my mind, and instantaneously I started being concerned, almost going to the point of work. And I just started laughing. And I said, isn't that funny how the enemy is going to place that in my mind to get me to worry about something I'm getting ready to preach on so that I can stand up here and start to say, well, and you know what? For me, this is what I do. I'll tell you, my, this is my solution. My solution is I just close my eyes and I start saying, Jesus, And I'm back to sleep. Focus on him. That wonderful name. Just his name. Just his name. Can give you the peace that surpasses all human understanding. 
in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Now I want you, as I read this, this is Paul who's in prison. Paul is in prison. Paul is in prison. Paul is in prison. How many want to go to prison? Amen? But think about this. In 419, he says, But my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. <laughs> Paul is in a place right now where, I mean, it's not like our prisons today. I mean, they were nasty, they were dark, they were filthy, they were, they were very, they, you just didn't want to be there. Let's put it that way. And he says, my God will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So in the midst of where he does, he doesn't even know where he's going. He doesn't know if he ever is going to get out. He doesn't know what's going on, but he doesn't stop praising him. He doesn't stop thanking him. He doesn't stop relying on him. That no matter what the scenario is, he is still going to glorify God. So in the midst of worry, what do we do? We turn it over to him. He says, my yoke is light. It's not burdensome. Take my yoke. Take my yoke. Yoke up with me. When you yoke up with me, all of a sudden, and you really rely on him, that worry starts to go because you know that he will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But what do we see? You see, when God provides, it doesn't mean, listen, it doesn't mean that we're going to get everything we ask for or everything we may need. It's what his desire is. It's what his plan is. It's what his purpose is. I mean, I, I, I continue to laugh. I was just talking yesterday. There was a, there was a um, couple of houses that came into our, pa in our past and something else and, you know, Doors shut yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, the thing that ends up being is, if you get worried about the scenario, I'm telling you, I believe, and I've shared this before, I believe that if settlement was on that house, and we still don't have a place that I know that on July, the end of July, if that was settlement, that one hour before, one hour before, that somebody could show up with a, with a truck, somebody could show up with a set of keys, Somebody could show up and say, park packing your stuff and get you out by the end of the day and here's where you're going. Yep. Amen. God can't do that. Yes, he can. Yes. He can do anything at any time, any time. And yet we have to learn to do one thing is to not to be doubting him and when he can do it. Because think about it. Many of the times we worry about is because things that we wanted to go our way. Not his way. And when we line up with him, when we line up with his way, because his yoke is light, when we're in that place, when we're in that place, all of a sudden, God, hey, listen, <laughs> no matter what, hey, if that's the end of the day and nothing happens, guess what? We're going to stand outside on the street corner and say, okay, where are we going? <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Amen. Because I've got to trust God. Because if I put it in anybody else's lap to figure out, let me tell you, everybody in this room is not perfect. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. We're striving for that. We're striving to be perfect. But the thing that ends up being is, guess what? You can't rely on me and I can't rely on you because I am human and you're human. And the bottom line of being is, so if I put my trust in you, I'm no longer putting my trust in him. And when I put my trust in him, he can move in his heart. He can move in her heart. He can move in his heart. He can move in people's hearts. Right. I was sharing this the other day, and I was telling people, and I remember about the, the, the house over here, and we were praying and praying and praying and praying and praying and so forth and so on. And the thing that ends up being, people were saying, I'm just praying for that house. I'm praying for the house. Please stop praying for the house. Pray for the people who own the house. A house can't change. Right. A house can't... See, we pray for a car. No, you pray for the person who owns the car. Amen. 
See, God can change somebody's heart. He can't change a materialistic thing. But he can change somebody's heart. Amen. So you pray for people. That's who God uses. Amen. God uses people to change things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now remember in 419. And he says, but my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And he was talking basically in a sense. He wasn't looking for riches. He wasn't looking for a new wardrobe. He wasn't even looking for food. He needed a financial blessing. I mean a spiritual blessing. Amen. He needed a spiritual blessing. He will provide all of your needs. All of your needs. And let me tell you, I would rather be more spiritually wealthy than financially wealthy. Hallelujah. I would be more spiritually wealthy than having cars and houses and all the kinds of things because along with that comes worry. And the bottom line's opinion is if I have a spiritual maturity, then what happens is I can trust God no matter what he wants. And he will add to me, mm -hmm. listen, he will add to me when I am in that place. Yes. And he will add to each and every one of us yes. when we see that and we understand that. So in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, this is what it says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? Thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God. And the what? The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Be careful for nothing. Yes, lay up your, lay up your prayers. Lay up your, your petitions. Lay them up and pray according to as the Spirit of God gives you. And you know what? The bottom lines of being is He will spiritually bless you to the point where you know what? You say, you know what, God? Whatever you have for me, I'm happy with. And you will continue to bless me. And you will continue to see me through the situation and the circumstance. Notice it says peace. And peace. Isn't that really what we need? When you're in the midst of worry, what are you looking for? Peace. He is our peace. He is our resolve. Hallelujah. And then there's something else that happens. Worry often causes us to go into another place. What if? What if? What if this happens? What if that happens? What if, what if, what if? And all of a sudden, you get into work. What if? Well, we either have to believe that God is who he says he is, or we have to look at the other side and look at the worldly way of thinking and saying, yeah, but what if? You know, I've seen God do miraculous things, and I'm sure everybody in this room has seen God do some miracle things. There's a miracle right here. Amen. We got Rocco here today, amen? amen. What if? What if? What if? Don't worry about it. God knows. Amen. You keep praying. You keep pressing in. And there's people in your there's people in your family. There's people in your friends. There's issues, there's circumstances. We got Judy back there. It's going to be a testimony. But you can you can sit here and say, but what if? So what, what, what's what if? What if is saying, you know what? I'm going to worry about something that I have no power over, but I know that God can do what he says he can do. Yes. And because of that, there's no longer worry that he's, she's in God's hands, he's in God's hands, your family's in God's hands, your kids are in God's hands. It's in God's hands. Thank you, Jesus. 1 John 4.18 there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that fears is not made perfect in love. Understanding this, the more we love God, the more we fall madly in love with him, the more we realize, remember, God is love. 
Love is God. You can't separate him. They are. They are who he is. And the bottom line ends up being is, is that when we are in him, is that perfect love casts out fear, casts out worry. Amen. When we truly, truly believe it and walk in it. You see, we create a habit of worry. But it takes time to reconditioning our thought process over and over and over. You see, in Matthew 6, it tells us not to worry because he has everything in control. Amen. And he is for us, he's not against us. In 2 Timothy 1, 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. You see, these scriptures that we're going through today to understand that, you know, again, it's not just hearing the word, but being a doer of the word. Right. Amen. By, by letting this word get deep down inside, that it becomes a rhema word. When it becomes a rhema word, then the bottom line ends up being is, you know what, God? You know what? You said this. This is what you said. This is what your word says. You're not a liar. You can't lie. So therefore, I know that you're telling me the truth. So I'm trusting you. And then all of a sudden, the enemy starts gabbing in your ears and starts telling you this and starts telling you that. And we've got to come to a place where we say, whoa, 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 whoa. You don't understand. You don't understand. I'm trusting the one who died on the cross for me, the one who saved me, the one who's restored me. And brought me back to the Father. Amen. Worry really is the inability or the unwillingness to trust God. Amen. That's what it is. Unable to trust God. <coughs> so do we really trust him? Will he? Or what if? What if he doesn't do that? Well, he is always going to complete that which he says he will do. Our desire may not match up with his plan. Right. And because of that, we set ourselves up for disappointment. Amen. And when we set ourselves up for disappointment, whose fault is it? It's nobody but ourselves. We set ourselves up for disappointment. Amen. Instead of trusting him and who he is and what he says he will do. Hallelujah. So, we're going to spend the next maybe 10 minutes, and then we'll be done. And I want to go over some scriptures. I'm just going to read through them. And I want you to, they'll be up on the screen. And these are things to remember that God is who he says he will, and he will do what he says he will do. God says he will do. Do we trust him? Do we trust him? Do we really, really think about it? And this is the whole aspect of today. You see, we know God, we accepted him. We, we know that he's real. We know that he's there. We know that we, we have seen him do miracles over and over and over. We've seen him do miracles in your life and in my life. And yet we still allow the enemy to yak in our ear and say, but can God do that? Yes, he can. Yes, Amen. yes he can. So when we read these scriptures, I want you to really, really, really consider what these scriptures are saying. Get them deep down in your heart. Isaiah 40, verse 28. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. In Psalms 121, 2 to 4. My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Let me tell you this right now. God doesn't take a nap. Amen. Amen. At 3 o'clock in the afternoon, when I'm feeling a little, I, I may put my head back and take a little quick nap just to kind of get refreshed. God doesn't take a nap. 
guess what? At 2 o'clock in the morning, when your head is on that pillow and you're sound asleep, he is there with you and he is not slumbering or sleeping. He doesn't take vacations. Thank God. But the enemy takes vacations during the summertime. Did you know that? That's why nobody goes to church. They, they go out because, because he takes vacations during the summertime. Yeah. So I go to church. He's no, no big deal. He's taking a vacation. <laughs> Amen. That's next week's sermon. <laughs> Romans, 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 Romans 8, 35 to 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written for thy sake? We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am what? Persuaded. 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 Somebody coming up yesterday, I was out back and I was fixing one of the one of our apple trees, one whole thing snapped down. But it was good because all the deer are back there, man. It's like footprints all over the place. Hey, you got deer. And guy came back I hadn't seen for a while selling insurance. And he sat there and well, basically it was Medicare. And uh he tell me all this and everything like that, and I said everything's cool, everything's taken care of, we're good, and everything. See, he didn't persuade me. Right. He was trying, trying, as a good insurance agent, to get me to sit down and talk and see whatever, but he was not persuaded. So look at this scripture. It says, "For I am persuaded." I am persuaded, that means that I know that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things to present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall able to separate yeah. us from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing! Amen. Woo. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. The person who's chit-chatting in your ear and trying to do, no, 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 you don't understand. <laughs> You can't say anything that can separate me from his love. That's right. First Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares upon me, Amen. for he cares for you. This is the God that we can trust. Knowing, knowing, knowing that when all of a sudden something goes wrong and we start worrying about how's it going, we should start laughing and saying, you know what? Thank you, God, that you got it under control. Thank you that you know exactly what I need to do. Now, here's another thing that we're going to share real quick. This is just a side note. When you're in worry and you trust him, that doesn't mean you just sit there and say, okay, Lord, take care of it for me. No, because he's going to tell you, you need to do this and you need to do this. Maybe you need to spend some time away from this and you need to go over here and do this. Maybe you need to do this, but you need to be obedient. Amen. But you need to be obedient. Amen. Remember, we're not born to be warriors. Amen. We're born to be warriors. Amen. Now, this is what God says about us. Romans 8, 17. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God. And joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Joint heirs. Joint heirs. That means when we accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there was a contract that was signed that you are now my child. Amen. I have adopted you. Amen. And we are an adopted child of God. And because of that, everything that is God's, everything that is Christ Jesus is also ours. Amen. Why? Because we're joint heirs yeah. with him. In Romans 8, 35, 37, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. 
we are counted as sheep in the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved, that loved us. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath been before ordained that we should walk in them. And then finally in 1 Peter 2, 9, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. You're a strange bunch of people. That you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marble, this light. Worrying is toxic. It's death. Worry is crippled. But Jesus came to give us life and freedom. Through him. Not through anyone else. Not through any organization. Not through any church. Not through any person. Him. He is the author and the finisher of your faith. He knows what tomorrow is going to bring before it even comes. You can sit here and worry all you want about tomorrow. But the Bible says that tomorrow will take care of itself. Yeah. Because he's already there. He's already, he's a great setup artist. He's already there tomorrow, setting it up for you today. But we've got to walk in that, and we've got to walk in that trusting that he is going to take care of every scenario and every situation. Yeah. Trusting in him. And stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Glory. I pray that this morning that you got something out of this that kind of relieved maybe some of your work. Some of something that maybe you were going through. See, worry is, is actually sin. When we start to worry about things and not trusting God, we're literally just kind of pushing him away and saying, you know what? Let me be God for a while and resolve the problem. And God says, you don't understand what my position is. You're my child and I care for you. And I love you and I want the best for you. Listen to me. Listen to me. Take my yoke. It is light. It's not burdensome. Trust me. Even though you don't see me, even though you can't touch me and feel me, I'm still there because I'm in you. I'm with you. I'm protecting and guiding you. I want the best for you. Let me be God. Father, help us, Lord, to take an assessment. Help us, Lord God, as the scripture says, Lord, to take every thought captive. Take every thought captive that would exhort itself above you. Yes. Lord, help us, Lord God, to, to take a captive and say, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I can see that I'm going down that pathway of torment, that pathway of worry. Forgive me, Lord, the times that I've worried because I haven't been praying. I haven't been reading the Word. I haven't been trusting you. And I need to do it my own way. Forgive me, Lord God, for allowing me to go down that pathway. The pathway of destruction, the pathway of torment. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that today that you can give us that freedom that freedom. That, Lord, that we can cast all of our cares upon you. Why? Because you care for us. And that, Lord, that no matter what, you will see us through. Yes. Father, I ask you to be with each and every one in this room. That, Lord, that we would take this, this message, Lord, and hold on to it, Lord. Not just be a hearer, but now apply it. And say, I'm not going there. Just close your eyes and start repeating that marvelous name Jesus, 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 Jesus. 
Watch your heart start to settle down and your heart get to a place of peace again. And Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're always with us. You said you never leave us and you'll never forsake us. Father, today, Lord, as we come, as we give of our tithes, our offerings, and we give of our gifts, Lord, Lord, that which you have blessed us with so that, Lord, that we can bless others. Lord, our talents. And Father, I ask you, Lord God, that you will multiply them, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to stay focused on you. Stay in our lane, Lord God, so that we can be all that you've asked us and called us to be. And Father, we ask you that you would continue to bless it. Continue, Lord, to bear much fruit. And Father, we just always, Lord, give you the glory. We give you the, we give you the praise. And Lord, we just love you this morning for all that you have done, all that you are doing, and all that you're going to do. And Father, protect us and guide us for this week ahead if you would give us another moment. Father, we just love you and we thank you. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Go in peace. Serve the Lord. There is some stuff back there in the pantry room. There's some... Uh, uh, donuts and bread and there's some a lot of canned goods and stuff back there too. Go back, help yourself, put them in a box and bless somebody.